Welcome to the SMB Community Podcast with hosts Amy Babinchek, James Kernan, and Carl Polachek. Produced by Kernan Consulting and for the international MSP community, we are dedicated to making every IT professional a successful IT professional. Hey, be sure to join us in Newport Beach, sunny Newport Beach, California, on December 7th and 8th. That's the upcoming Mastermind Live Roadshow for Q4. So uh, if you're interested in growing your business, learning more about sales, learning more about marketing, learning more about culture, leadership, uh, EOS, mergers, acquisitions. We've got some great speakers lined up for you. Uh, and you'll also hear one of the most important parts is we have several very successful MSPs from all around North America that come and present at these and they talk about what's working for them, what's working and what's not working. And it's a great learning environment uh, on that first day on the 7th. And then we've got also great speakers lined up like myself, one of my favorite speakers, uh, I'll be talking about sales process. We've got a marketing workshop from uh, Charlene Ignacio. Uh, and then we've got EOS. We've got leadership. We've got great things lined up. So, hey, be sure to sign up. And one important part, if you want the early bird discount, you need to sign up before the middle of November and use the coupon code early bird and you'll get a $200 discount. The The, the fee is only $99. So uh, we're also arranging some fun activities. The, the $99 early bird fee does include uh, breakfast and lunch on both Thursday and Friday. Typically, there's group activities in the evening, and we're looking into a harbor cruise on that Thursday. So it's going to be a great event. I hope to see everybody there. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the SMB Community Podcast. This is James Kernan with Kernan Consulting. And I am here today with me, myself, and I. <laughs> Actually, it's going to be me today, uh, but we have a really cool lineup. I've got several cool things to share with you today. And uh, first and foremost, the question of the week. This is a good one. It was, what do you do when your customer hires one of your employees? All right, be honest. How many of you listening right now has that happened to, right? I'm raising my hand. I mean, it's happened more than once. It's probably happened half a dozen to a dozen times over my career. So uh, what a great question. Thanks for submitting that. And let me elaborate on a couple things. So I'm going to start off with the question. What do you do when a customer hires one of your employees? So first, I would just step back and I want to ask a couple qualifying questions. Number one, you know, do you the employer have an employee agreement with your employees, you should. And if you don't, uh, feel free to reach out to me at james at kernanconsulting.com. And I'm happy to send you an example employee agreement that, uh, that you should have in place with all your employees and subcontractors. Uh, but that's step one. Step two, more importantly, is in your master services agreement with your customer, do you have anything in place where there's a non-solicitation? Uh, many people do not have that, but what they do have is uh, a clause that does talk about if you do hire any of our employees that are engaged in your account, uh, that you owe us money, okay? And again, I've got some language on that in some agreements that I've written and paid attorneys lots of money to have in my agreements. But that's really important to have in your master service agreements. Okay. So number two, you want to make sure that you do have language like that written. Uh, I, I don't like having really negative language in my agreements that being really snotty, saying that you can't do this. Uh, I, I would just say in the event that this does happen, for convenience, you know, you pay me uh, 1.5 times the annual salary of what the employee is that went aboard, you know? So I think that's important that you've got language in there. So you're setting expectations right at the very beginning. And then thirdly, the other big question for me is, did the customer ask for your permission to talk to them and interview them and hire them before this incident happened? Okay. So if they didn't do that, to me, it's a huge sign of disrespect 
and you probably won't continue to do business with them anyway. Uh, but all those questions are good follow-up questions in this scenario because it's going to help you either retain the client or not retain the client. Okay. So uh, this has happened to me multiple times and it typically happens to all of us once before we get burned. And then we put in stronger language in our agreements. And hopefully all of you have that in your agreements. But the thing I would do in follow-up, I would, um, I would follow up with the client directly typically an executive or your primary point of contact of who you work with and just ask them what happened. And, uh, you know, I was always trying to be fair about things, but if, if this is a better fit for someone else, I didn't want to get in the way, but if I did have something in writing, cause it's going to cost you a lot of money to replace the person that they're hiring away. You got to train them. You got to get all the same certifications that maybe that employee had that's going out the door and personally, for me, if I if I found that it was a fit for them and a fit for me, and they were going to play ball, you know, with us, meaning like they were going to compensate us, you know, something, um, then then I would always be okay with it. And uh, it never ended up in in legal battles, uh, but there was one time where I did purchase a company, and right after I purchased the company, that first week. One of the top engineers, very decorated engineer, made six figures. Uh, he ended up going aboard with the largest client. And their intentions, of course, was to save money by hiring this guy. They were going to drop the axe on the company I bought on that managed service agreement, and they weren't going to work with him anymore. And it was the quickest conversation. I called the C CFO and said, hey, look, I'm James Kernan. I'm uh, the business owner that just purchased company ABC. You hired one of my employees. I'll send you the master services agreement with your executive signature on it saying that you won't do these things. And if you do hire the people, then you owe me 1.5 times the annual salary of the employee. I said, look, I, I'm just a, a happily married man with two kids. I've got, uh, I'm trying to feed my family. I'm trying to grow my business. I just bought this business. It cost me money, a lot of time and energy and resources. And you just hired one of my top engineers away. So I'd like you to just pay close attention to this agreement. I'm going to email it to you right now. And I got a check that week. You know, it was the fastest conversation I've ever had in my life. And, uh, you know, long story short, that client, which was their biggest managed service client, uh, didn't stay. But uh, I didn't want them anyway because of their unethical actions. So anyway, what a great question. What do you do when one of your customers hire away your employees? So uh, make sure you've got agreements in place that talk about the outcome. If this does happen, here's what we expect. Uh, you should set expectations with not only your customer, but also your employee with a good employee agreement. I would never, uh, I would never say that uh, you're not allowed to ever go work and earn a living for your family. Uh, but I was just trying to set expectations in the employee agreement that they would uh, give us the benefit of the doubt, let us know ahead of time if this ever happened, if they were ever solicited. Uh, those were things that I had in in my agreements. Uh, but but that's important that you have something protecting your business because our employees are one of the most important and most valuable assets that you have. So uh, you know you've got to protect that. And you got to protect your, your company and make sure that you've got good agreements in place with your clients and your employees. Okay. So thanks again for that question. That was awesome. Um, and then I also want to introduce, I've got uh, a great interview this week with five minutes with a smart person. I've got Stephen Frank from TD Cinex. Stephen is the sales manager of their MSP division. And if, if you're not buying and leveraging all the resources at TD Cynix, everybody, then you should, because you're missing out big time. Um, a secret to a lot of the growth that I had when I ran my businesses, you know, there was a, a small reseller up in LA uh, when I first started in the industry, we leveraged the resources uh, from our distribution partners, for example, and we grew from 8 million to 32 million over a five-year time frame. Uh, I went to another uh, big competitor in Southern California called TIG. And when I was with them, same thing. We leveraged our manufacturer partners and our distributor partners. We we're heavily engaged with Ingram at the time and then also um, uh, Tech Data. 
but we uh, we grew from three, uh, what was about 30 million when I started. In seven years, we grew to over 315 million in revenues. Okay. And then the last company that I had that I, I bought uh, was a real small uh, MSP. It was 378,000 previous year's revenue when I bought it. I grew it to 12 million in less than three years. And then I sold that. And that's when I became a business coach. So a little background on that. But, uh, you know, how do you grow that fast when you're a small company? Okay. I didn't have the money to pay for you know, 10, 20, 30 engineers that make $200,000 a year, but I outsourced it and I leveraged those resources through my distribution partners, okay? So TD Synex will talk about that. They'll talk about a lot of the other cool things that they have. So make sure you listen in for the five minutes with a smart person with Stephen Frank, MSP sales manager. Okay. <laughs>
or fill any gaps that you may have. So you never have to say no to an opportunity. Um, you know, for instance, you mentioned, you know, different states and Canada, things like that. Maybe you're a small MSP in New York City and you come across, uh, you know, an end user that has multiple locations across the country. You don't want to fly your sole engineer to each different location and roll out these installations. Well, we have people in every single state throughout the country, through, the, um, through North America, that can actually go on site and help with these installations, um, you know, whatever it may be that you guys are trying to do for that end user. So our professional services is something that a lot of MSPs leverage to, to help scale and grow and have a larger footprint than they normally would. And I know at our last uh, mastermind conference, you guys did a good job and, and kind of wowed the audience of all the marketing resources, campaigns, content, and even a platform uh, that you offer free of charge to your, your MSPs, your resellers, uh, called uh, Demand Solve. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah. So our Demand Solve platform is just like you said, it's a free marketing tool that we have developed and uh, worked on for our our resellers, uh, MSPs included, to utilize. So it will actually do marketing content on your behalf on social media. So, you know, post on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, um, whatever it may be there, but it also help you white label, um, you know, one pagers, things like that with your logo, you can select what vendors. Uh, there's right now, I believe, a little over 50 vendors in there. So it's not just random content, it's actually content that's um, pertinent to your business. So mm -hmm. it, it makes sense for what you're doing. And that is free of charge, it will do email campaigns for you. And this, this tool is continuously evolving. Um, they're adding more and more to it. They discussed uh, that briefly at our inspire conference we just had our national conference in greenville um so that yeah the the marketing tool is great and it'll actually let you know um about qualified leads which ones are warm who's clicked on this things like that so it gives you a lot of insight into what people are actually touching that you're putting out there as well yeah and and something new um uh, i'll just comment on you know there's a lot of m a activity right everybody's interested in buying someone or a lot of people are interested in creating a succession plan and getting out of the business. And I think at the last advisory meeting, I had learned that you guys put together a, an M&A forum for your partners just to connect buyers and sellers together, uh, which, which I think is fantastic. That's a great, great idea. So uh, any other, you know, there, I can go on and on and on about the different resources that you guys have available, but anything else that you think is important from a high level for the MSPs to know? Yeah, absolutely. So as I mentioned in the beginning, you know, distribution has evolved and to think of us as an extension of your team. So what we've done under John Phillips, our senior vice president of uh, SMB and MSP sales is we've created an MSP sales team within TD Cenex. So um, I manage that sales team and that team is dedicated solely to MSPs. They understand your business. They know what you're doing. And we're able to pull in those resources such as professional services, but we also have pre-sales engineering. We have technical resources on staff. For instance, some of our Microsoft engineers actually used to work for Microsoft. They know these products inside and out. And we understand how um, expensive it can be to hire engineers, especially if you're in the beginning stages of your MSP. Um, and you're trying to put that money back in your company, well, we have the engineers on staff to help you. So a huge takeaway from this would be the resources that TD Cenex has that are that are there for you to use. We put them in place solely for you guys to take advantage of. Those engineers, um, you know, salespeople for each vendor product that can answer questions, help you get what you need, make sure that we're providing the right thing for your end user. And then that professional services organization that's there to back you and give you support when needed. Um, you know, that that's what our team is there to do every day. And that's how we're helping a lot of our part, uh, partners. Yep. Yep. That's awesome. So let me let me share a quick story, if I could, Stephen, uh, that kind of helps strengthen your point. You know, on the program a few weeks ago, we've talked about the unique selling proposition that that most MSPs struggle with. And my point is the, the your unique selling proposition is it's the it's the key it's your elevator pitch it's the key marketing message that you're communicating to your clients and your prospects, and really what you want to tell them is not what you can do, you know not where you've been, not all the services that you provide. You need to tell them how you're different or better than your competition, okay. And recently I sat down with a, a small MSP here in the Midwest and we we're having coffee 
and it was our first meeting. And I said, well, tell me, what's your unique selling proposition? Tell me who you guys are. Well, you know, James, uh, we're a small MSP. We're here in the Midwest and we're really, really nice people. Um, we respond fast. We have three technicians and, uh, you know, we've been around for 10 years. I guess that's it. And I kind of chuckled and said, okay, well, you know, take, take this constructive criticism as a, as of a, you know, helpful hint here, but, but why, why would I buy from you? You didn't say anything different. If anything, you presented yourself as really tiny and almost too small to support anything that I need. I feel like my technical team is, is maybe stronger than your three technicians. I'm not trying to be mean. I, I want everybody to look bigger and better than you really are without lying. You know, to me, that's the a key uh, definition of of excellent marketing. You want to look bigger and better than you really are without lying. Okay, you need to leverage partnerships like TD Cinex. I said, wouldn't it be better for you to say, "Hey, look, we're headquartered. We're an award winning MSP. We're headquartered in the Midwest. We've got 22 full time, part time, and subcontract highly certified, highly trained engineers right here in our home office. But we're also part of a international service network that gives me access to over 22 certified engineers or 22,000 certified engineers in all 50 states. We've got 17 different distribution hubs that I have access to over 1,700 major manufacturer um, goods and services, you know, like Cisco, Microsoft, uh, Lenovo, and HP. You know, do you buy any of those things? You know, that's so much stronger of a of a message. You know, your competitors aren't saying that. And all of that is true if you're an MSP partner with, with TD Cinex. You've got all those resources available at your fingertips. So I don't know about you, but I would rather buy from the second guy than the first guy because <laughs> it sure, sounds like absolutely. they can take care of our needs, right? Absolutely. And one, one thing I tell all of our partners, and, um, you know, we work very closely with them, is we are only as successful as you are. So all of these resources truly are put in place to help lift and support your business and help you continue to do what you're doing and grow. So yeah. everything you just said, you hit the nail on the head. Yeah. And Stephen, I just want to say thank you on behalf of the mastermind community. I, I've known you for several years. You're a man of integrity. And I've never seen this before. You know, everybody, let me just preface this by saying TD Cinex is the number one largest distribution company in the world of de technology products. They're not a little mom and pop shop. They're huge, okay? TD Cinex is the number one by far. Uh, Steven will give out his personal cell number, his email address, and when you have an issue, and you will, okay? You'll have issues with anybody that you do business with. You pick up the phone and call him and he'll take care of it. He'll do his best, he'll respond. And so many big companies, uh, first of all, will never do that and hand out a uh, contact information for uh, executives. And then, you know, then you kind of fall into the black hole when you have an issue, it just keeps going and you let people know and nobody ever fixes things. And uh, every single time I've given out your contact information to our, our member uh, clients, they uh, have a great experience. So thank you for that. Absolutely. I love working with those guys. And I've had several, several conversations after hours with several of them when things have gone wrong to make sure we got them taken care of. So, you know, always yeah. happy. To help. You know, that old customer service statistic, I mean, you could be 10 for 10, have a survey, you know, 10 stars on 10 perfect transactions. And that client's going to probably rate you an A, okay, because they had a perfect experience with you. But you could have uh, the next one, you could have nine of the 10 went perfectly, and then one was a catastrophe. And they reached out to you and you fixed it in a snap. You took care of things. That rating is going to end up being an A++ because they had an issue and you saved the day. And that's exactly you know what happens in our industry. There's so many things that can go wrong on an order, on a project, and you need someone that you know and trust uh, as a partner. And uh, I certainly put a lot of the successes that I've had in growing my businesses uh, and, and success that we've had there back to our, our distribution partners like Steven. And same thing as I'm helping uh, my customers grow, you guys are doing a great job. So, so thanks again. 
So any, uh, so I did want to ask, how can people get in touch with you if if they're not a reseller today and they want to sign up in your program? I, I know it's free of charge, but what what do they need to do? Who do they reach out to? Yeah, they can actually reach out to me directly, and I will help facilitate the relationship and get everything taken care of. And my personal email is Stephen dot Frank at tdcenex.com. That's S T E V E N dot f r a n k at tdcenex.com and i will help get them set up um, i will get them an account manager one thing we do uh is every single msp gets a dedicated account manager so they have mm -hmm. a person that they could actually pick up the phone and call they'll have my information as well and we also have a field team there to uh, support them with some product knowledge and things like that so they'll get access to that entire thing but they can reach out to me directly to start the relationship all right. Fantastic. Well, hey, thanks for being on. Thanks for sharing today. And, and again, thanks for what you do for the channel. Uh, it's because of efforts like yours that uh, there's so many successful MSPs out there. So thanks again, Steve, and we'll see you next time. So a couple other topics I wanted to talk about this week. Surprise, surprise, surprise. There is another big breach and this one was a weird one, so I wanted to talk about it. It's not like one of the headliners, like one of the major casinos or utility companies, right? This one was 23andMe, okay? There was a big breach this month, 23andMe. So how many of you have had your DNA tested? Maybe you get the, uh, there's a couple companies out there doing it, but um, uh, you get your DNA and you kind of look into your family tree, your family heritage. That's really cool, right? I've always wondered what happens if this data gets exposed and, and it gets exposed into the wrong hands, okay? Um, you know, your DNA carries a lot of other things other than, you know, where maybe your ancestors lived, okay, and what your, you know, ethnicity is. You know, it could also carry information about diseases, you know, family history of diseases and, and things like that. And I'm not going to get into that because that's Pandora's box and it's it's a nasty one. But, um, you know, that's a major breach. And I'm concerned that uh, uh, that that our data out there is floating around in the wrong people's hands. Um, so the the things that you should always do if if you have an account with a company that has been breached, number one, reach out to their customer support and find out what to do. Um Immediately, I would change your password. I would also enable two-factor authentication if you haven't already done so. And, uh, you know, protect that login information from that continuing to be exposed. A lot of times when when the, the bad guys get those credentials, they maybe don't do anything with it, but they resell it on the dark web to other people that really want that. Uh, you know, that's that's the part that's terrifying to me. Of, of what happens after the fact. So make sure you protect yourself like always, but watch that in the news. It'll be an interesting one to see how that transpires out. And unfortunately it happened, you know, cause I'm a fan of, of that stuff. I like hearing more about the family tree, but I've always been skeptical about that. If this data gets in the wrong people's hands, you know, maybe insurance prices will go up or healthcare providers won't cover you. Uh, it, you know, it's, it's ugly, it's ugly, okay? So that was uh, in the news topic number one. In the news topic number two, not sure if you've been following along, but ScalePad has kind of been on a roll lately. You know, they um, uh, earlier this year they made a major announcement. They hired or, or actually acquired uh, Lifecycle Insights, uh, Marnie Stockman, Alex Farling, really cool company that focused energy onto the making QBRs the best they can be. Uh, got to know those people, wonderful product, uh, wonderful training that they had. Well, they became part of the ScalePad family, uh, you know, a few months back. And then recently, uh, just about a week ago, ScalePad acquired a company called Quoter. Okay, Quoter. So uh, they've got everything from the warranty and the renewals tracking, now the QBR tracking and a lot of training. Now they've got a quote platform. So it's kind of interesting to see where ScalePad is going with this. But uh, I was already a, a ScalePad fan. You know, I like what they're doing with that portfolio of products. And now they've got Quoter. So uh, that's maybe one to check out as well. And they're going to be at my mastermind event in Newport Beach. So if any of you are out on the West Coast, 
you want to go check out that um, uh, the Mastermind Live event. It's December 7th and December 8th in Newport Beach, California. ScalePad will be there. And uh, this is big news. So I'm sure they're going to be talking about quota when they're there. If any of you want to check out the, uh, uh, if any of you want to do attend the event, there's an early bird discount. If you go to the link in the show notes, you can register for the event. Type in early bird, one word, just early bird, and it will give you a $200 discount. You'll get your ticket for $99. But if you really, 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 really want to go, uh, just email me the first person that I get an email from. I'm going to give you a complimentary ticket for free uh, and food's included. And we've got a Harbor cruise. It'll be a lot of fun. We've got two full days of education. And the best part of the event really is the very first morning, I've got several of my clients from all around the country talking about what they did in their business and, and what they did to grow. They'll be sharing marketing campaigns and and things uh, that help them. So they'll be reporting their results. So make sure you come check that out. But just email me at james at kernanconsulting.com. james at kernanconsulting.com. The first one uh, that sends me that message, I'll track that. Just say, you know, I'm interested in my free ticket to Newport Beach Mastermind. Uh, there you go. I'll let you know and I'll announce that later. Okay. So that's the second topic. The third and final topic uh, I thought was kind of interesting. There was uh, something I read in msptechnews.com, okay? And it said, when do you hire someone better than you? That was the article, okay? And when do you hire someone better than you? And in the article, if you go to that, they kind of talk about, they're talking about the skills gap. And the first thing you need to know is, is where your strengths are and where your team's strengths are, and then where's your weakness, right? So kind of a SWOT analysis, not just on your business, but your employees, okay? We should all have that information, right? Uh, and then when the, the point of the article was when you see that skills gap growing from customer demand, and then what you're able to deliver with the skills that your team has, that's pointing out that you need to hire someone that can backfill that skills gap, okay? And in, in this article, they're implying you know, if you do that, then you're hiring someone better than you. Um, my answer to that question is when you when you think you can barely afford it, okay? <laughs> um, I've been part of several fast growth organizations and I've always hired the very best possible candidates I can. They were expensive, they were well qualified, and we ultimately built the dream team in every organization that I was a part of. You know, if I deliberately hired the cheapest person I could get or the worst person I could get, you know, wh why would you do that? You know, you want to, you know, again, our most important asset, I was just talking about this with the uh, question of the week, you know, what happens when one of your customers hires away one of your superstars? You know, you need to protect your culture with good agreements, but uh, you should be hiring someone better than you at every opportunity, okay? At every opportunity would be my answer to that question. So check that out, msptechnews.com. It's a great article. But, uh, and then the last plug again, just friendly reminder, we've got a couple events coming up that I'll be speaking at. I'll be in Newport Beach at the Mastermind Live Roadshow, December 7th and 8th. Uh, you can check that out up um, up in the show notes. There's the link to get more information on that event. And then there's a really cool event that uh, I'll be speaking at as well. Fornix Marketing is putting this on. It's an MSSP sales and marketing two-day workshop in Honolulu, Hawaii, January 16th through the 18th. Okay. The event itself is on the 17th and 18th. Uh, and then they have like a uh, an evening uh, welcome reception. But if anybody is maybe out in the Hawaiian islands or on the West coast, and you're interested in checking out that conference, uh, there's a lot of education. I'm one of the several speakers. I think there's 10 speakers that are coming to educate all focused highly on sales and marketing. So it's similar to the mastermind events that we're doing, but they do have a, a, a different lineup for sure. Uh, contact me, just email James at, kernanconsulting.com if you want more information on that. I'll drop the link to the conference, but there's a, a $500 discount code I can send you if you're interested in checking out that event. So those are some fun events that are coming up and uh, encourage you, if you liked what you heard today, 
Uh, make sure that you uh, send me your comments. You can email or just go to smbcommunitypodcast.com. I'd uh, love to hear your comments there. Share our uh, the podcast with your friends. We love new listeners. And any questions that you have, I love the questions that we've been getting lately. They're really good ones. So um, eager to hear from all of you with any comments, suggestions, or questions. Uh, I'm happy to read those off during the live program. All right, everybody. So until next time, fire up. Let's kick some butt and um, let's finish the year strong. We're uh, we're kind of knee deep into Q4 right now. Uh, seems like the holidays are right before us. So the marketing efforts that you're doing today are going to pay dividends uh, through the rest of the quarter. So uh, make sure you're following up on all your proposals. Get those marketing campaigns launched and completed ASAP. So you can close whatever opportunities that drops into your pipeline sooner than later. Okay. All right, everybody. Until next time, I'll catch up with you soon. Take care.